The Nanomedicine Innovation Network, or NMIN, is the National Networks of Centers of Excellence, established in 2019 with an $18.5 million federal grant plus matching partner support. This network is led by Scientific Director Dr. Peter Cullis at UBC and Associate Scientific Director Dr. Gilbert Walker at the University of Toronto. The Networks of Centers of Excellence program aims to optimize Canadian scientific and technological leadership through the creation of national networks of expertise, technology, and talent across disciplines and sectors to generate social and economic benefits for Canadians. NMIN's specific aims are to establish a national R&D network with participants drawn from across sectors whose collective research, capacity building, and commercialization efforts strengthen Canada's position as a global leader in developing next generation nanomedicines, new Canadian companies, and new jobs in the knowledge economy. To realize these aims, NMIN invests in research in three priority areas, targeted drug delivery led by Marcel Bally and Star Lee at UBC, gene therapy led by Peter Cullis and Christian Kastrup at UBC, and diagnostics led by Shana Kelly and Gilbert Walker at the University of Toronto. In addition, 78% of NMIN's projects are supported by its core facilities teams, the Nanomedicines Formulation and Characterization Facility, or NanoCore, and the Pharmacology, Toxicology, and Scale Production Facility, or PharmaCore. NMIN also invests in support of translation and commercialization of research results into new therapeutic and clinical approaches, new policies, and new Canadian companies. These research, translation, and commercialization efforts are buttressed by support from seven Canadian universities situated in five provinces and from 73 partners, of which 50% are in industry, spanning six sectors in seven countries. Finally, Edmund's 49 investigators work on 30 funded projects alongside 97 trainees, of which two thirds are completing postdoctoral fellowships or PhD level programs. Notable is that 58% of Edmund's trainees are women and 63% are Canadian positioning Enmin to strategically contribute to the development of the next generation of nanomedicine leaders in this field. It's now my pleasure to turn the balance of this presentation over to Enmin's scientific director, Dr. Peter Cullis. Well, thanks, Diana. This is just to uh, summarize what our major themes are within the uh, nanomedicines network. Um, some of these have been reflected in the talks today, uh, targeted drug delivery, for example, uh, we now have the currently a ridiculous situation where less than 0.01% of a cancer drug, ah, the, oh, there we are, um, <clears throat> actually gets to um, the uh, tumor. We need to improve that rather dramatically. Uh, gene therapy, we, we need to enable um, larger molecules to be used therapeutically, particularly um, nucleic acid-based drugs uh, for gene therapies. And finally, uh, in the area of uh, diagnostics, we need to be able to have uh, point of care devices that more uh, <clears throat> that really do enable us to um, detect disease uh, very, uh, <clears throat> very precisely and uh, also uh, early in the stage of that disease, uh, both in terms of initial incidence and recurrence. And so we're, um, we're really aiming to extend our global lead, which we do have at the moment, uh, in the uh, nanomedicines area. Uh, so this is uh, going to be, uh, we have some ambitious targets, uh, developing preclinical technology dossiers for 10 nanomedicine drugs. This is over the five or six years of the, um, of the network. Uh, five diagnostics, uh, creating 10 new companies and creating 100 new jobs. And I think we'll do considerably better than 100 new jobs. Do I have the next sliders? I just want to update people with regard to uh, the um, one of the lead vaccines for um, for the SARS-CoV-2 uh, virus uh, for for uh, COVID-19. Um, this is a uh, and uh, <coughs> Bob Langer alluded to this in his talk, uh, but this is a um, lipid a lipid based formulation of mRNA coding for spike protein uh, of the uh, of the virus. Um, the uh, and this this is this is a uh, some rather remarkable. Can you uh, go to the next slide, Chris? This is just uh, in some data that came out quite recently uh, from uh, BioNTech Pfizer, and it's in non-human primates. 
I'm just showing a very strong uh, IgG neutralizing antibody response to these lipid nanoparticles that contain mRNA uh, coding for uh, the spike protein. Uh, so this is indicating uh, the number of days after vaccination, uh, 30 micrograms or 100 micrograms of RNA. And pointing out that so the, uh, it's pretty long-lived and strong uh, IgG response here. Uh, the gray panel on the far right uh, indicates the, um, uh, the IgG uh, levels that are pr present in the, uh, in the blood of uh, re people that have had, been infected with COVID-19 and have recovered. And so considerably stronger um, <clears throat> immune response than uh, for those people that have actually had the virus itself. The next slide. So this is uh, then challenging uh, those, uh, those non-human primates uh, this, uh, with the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. So trying to infect them with COVID-19. And uh, the, the bottom line on this is by any measure that could be used, uh, there was total protection against uh, the, uh, the virus in these non-human primates. I should say that the data from non-human primates does correlate very well uh, with, and this is from other studies, uh, with, with what's going to happen in people. And so um, it looks like a very, very potent vaccine is on the way. This is a vaccine that's been developed in coordination with um, Acutus Therapeutics here in Vancouver and really springs out of a, uh, a very of a long tradition uh, of work in the lipid nanoparticle field. Uh, this is the next sliders. So um, the, the, the trials of this, uh, of this vaccine are now in a, in a pretty advanced. Uh, they're enrolling 44,000 patients, uh, which are, uh, it's essentially going to be complete by the uh, middle of October. So there's, there's 30,000 patients uh, that was updated today already enrolled. Um, the, uh, the submission to the FDA to approve this vaccine uh, the Pfizer CEO indicates it's going to go in at the end of October, all being well. They're already manufacturing at risk uh, 100 or 200 million doses for the end of this year, 1.2 billion. They repurposed three factories, three manufacturing sites in the U.S., uh, one or two in Europe. Many customers are lining up worldwide. And so, um, as you may be aware, uh, the U.S. has options on uh, 600 million doses. 120 million to Japan, 90 to the UK, 200 doses to Europe, uh, et cetera. So the, um, the, there are a number of the doses which, are, which have been um, acquired or uh, which are reserved for Canada. Uh, we don't know how many that actually is. Um, but the bottom line here is that, uh, that nanomedicines, lipid nanoparticle technology, uh, is having an enormous impact. And uh, the, this is just really the tip of the iceberg uh, that we're seeing here. There will be many other vaccines. Uh, there will be all, almost all of gene therapy is just about to be opened up uh, by the use of this technology. So it's an enormously exciting time. And um, I hope everybody on the call uh, is, uh, or attending this conference realizes that. I'd like to close just by thanking Earth for putting on the uh, nanomedicines um, a day again. Uh, this has uh, really gone very smoothly, and I, I think the uh, the, uh, the the this is, this is an ex excellent uh, an excellent um, way that we that's uh, for publicizing what it is that we're doing in the nanomedicines area, and uh, for indicating the progress that we've made. So thank you for all your efforts to make this happen.